all, we are back in the OTT desk with that man right there. That is Dave Hatter, not on a wanted sign, more on a help needed sign. He is our cybersecurity expert helping us every week. Dave, thank you so much for being here. All right, first of all, let's talk about this. We know that hackers are everywhere. We know that possible glitches are everywhere. And that includes in our judicial system, right? Yeah, Eric, and you know, you just made an important point that's often overlooked. As a guy who spent 25 years writing software, a lot of the problems we see in today's world aren't necessarily because of hackers, they're because of problems in software. So that's that's a secondary problem as our world becomes increasingly digital. It's just bugs in the software. And so yeah, there's a, a court system in Kansas. And you know, I, I get frustrated, Eric, when I talk to people about this stuff, because I don't think people take it seriously unless you're in the business and you're paying attention to this like I am. You've got a court system that's been down for some time, looks like a ransomware attack. You've got attorneys having to file out, you know, fill fill in forms by hand, file things by fax. There's a term I bet you mm. haven't used in a while, fax machine. <laughs> And, and think about this now, potentially these hackers, if it's truly ransomware, and ransomware usually has two parts, they encrypt your data, want you to pay a ransom to make your systems work again, and now they steal the data, so if you don't pay the ransom, they threaten to release it on the internet. So now you could have who knows what kind of sensitive court cases with sensitive information about all of the parties involved, who knows what's in those documents, right? I mean, it's court, attorneys and subpoenas and that sort of thing. That could all be released on the internet, causing who knows what kind of damage. Well, and here's what you here's what you bring up too is like first of all, number one, do we still have fax machines? I didn't know about that. Was so you, you hear that, what, that familiar sound in the background? It still happens. It's still around. So maybe the older technology isn't as bad as maybe we thought it once was, right? Well, Eric, yeah, they're, trust me, they're still out there. We see them pretty regularly. And in some cases, they do have their place, whether it's a, a failover in the event that your more advanced technology doesn't work, or in some cases, I'm not saying fax machines in particular, but sometimes this older technology is actually more secure if for no other reason than it's more difficult to hack because fewer people know about it. You know, they don't really understand how it works because it's old. It's That's old right. like me, Eric. Uh, well, and, and me, and, and, and again, the old uh, pen to paper, paper to pen, that, that works well too uh, in this case. All right, so we're always looking to protect ourselves. Now we had a, had a viewer uh, email in and he had a very great, uh, very valid question here, VPNs. Now VPNs, they tell us here, you know, we, we're at home, we wanna do a little online shopping, clickety clackety, and we should turn the VPN on. How uh, helpful is a VPN? Well, it depends on what you want to accomplish, but in most cases, it's very helpful. So it stands for virtual private network, and in a nutshell, it allows you to create an encrypted connection between your computer and some server somewhere. Most corporations, if they're going to allow people to access their systems remotely, will use a VPN because it creates the encrypted channel much, much more difficult to have your information stolen, much, much more difficult to hack because of the nature of the way it works. For an individual, VPNs usually give you some additional security, although it's not necessarily that critical for the average person. But the other thing they do for you, Eric, is they give you some privacy and anonymity because let's say you go with a company like Nord. Nord makes a very well-known, very well-respected VPN product. It's fairly inexpensive. You, you fire up your Nord VPN, you can appear to be coming out of, let's say, Helsinki rather than Toledo, for example. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to do things like fool Netflix into letting you watch shows from Poland or the UK or wherever, because <laughs> that's where it appears you're coming from. You know, it, it does kind of help you cover your tracks. Again, it does give you some extra security. So, you know, I, I'm a tinfoil hat guy, Eric. You know this already. So yes, I'm a fan of VPN. Oh, there he is, our very own Dave Hatter, hanging out with Sven and Fritz in Helsinki watching Netflix. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Eric.